All right, guys, let's do this problem that says the vent rod is supported at A, B, and C by smooth journal bearings. Determine the magnitude of F2, which will cause a reaction at CY at the bearing C to be equal to zero. The bearings are in proper alignment and exert only force on the vent rod. The set F1 equals to 300 pounds. All right, so let's draw the free body diagram and all the forces acting on this. And the first thing that you should know is that CY is equal to zero so there is no cy right and then we have a cc we know we have a bc we have a bx we have a ax and we have an ay then we know that uh, f1 is equal to let's write it right here 300 pounds so make sure okay perfect so with this we can start doing this problem and let me write down right here that cy is equal to zero and they're asking us for f2 they're not asking us for the rest of the of the reactions but we might find them along the way or we might have to find them along the way we will see as we go so that being said the first thing that i want to do is I do the sum of the forces in the x and the y and the c, but for that we have to break down f1 and f2 into x, y, and c components into a Cartesian vector form. So to do that, start with f1. And I know that f1 in the x is equal to zero because it sits on the y c plane. f1 in the y is equal to negative 300 cosine of 45 which is equals to minus 212.13 and F1 in the C is minus 300 sine of 45 which again is equal to minus 212.13 cos sine of 45 and cosine of 45 are the exact same then let's do the same thing for F2 and that is equal to uh, sorry F2 is F2 in the X is equal to so F2 in the X will be this component right here to find that component right here we first find this component right here right so to find that component is f2 cosine of 45 because it's the cosine of this angle and then that times the sine of 30 and that is equal to 0 0.35355 let's call it f i'm going to call it f since i know that I already know F1, so I'm just calling this the magnitude of F2, I'm just calling it F, just so we know. So F2Y is, um, let me see, this component right here, and that is equal to F2 cosine of 45 cosine of 30, which is equal to point 61237F and F2C is equal to say this component right here minus because it's going down F2 sine of 45 so let's call it minus 0.70711F perfect so now let's do some of the forces in the X some of the forces in the Y and some of the forces in the C some of the forces on the x is equal to zero and that is equal to ax plus bx plus 0.35355f let's call this equation one some of the forces in the y is equal to zero and is equal to ay plus cy but cy is equal to zero so i'm not gonna write it down plus 0.61237 f minus 212.13 and that is equal to equation 2 now some of the forces on the c is equal to 0 and is equal to minus 212.13 plus BC plus CZ 
minus 0.70711F. Call this equation 3. All right, so as you can see, we have, um, let's write down the variables that we have. We have AX, BX, um, AY, we have F, AX, BX, F, AY, F again, BC and CC. So BC and CC. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six variables, so we only have three equations. So obviously we need to start making more equations until we can finally have enough equations to be able to solve this problem in some manner. So the next set of equations, I'm, I'm gonna try and get it by doing the sum of the moments. So sum of the moments in the X is equal to zero. And the moments about the X, as if I was looking from the top of the X axis and counterclockwise was positive, then I get that minus AY times four, because it's try AY is trying to turn it uh, clockwise. It's trying to turn the system clockwise. Um, plus 212.13 times five. So the 212.13 is the, um, the component of the F1 the, sorry, the Y component of F1, which is trying to turn it counterclockwise, and it's times five. Again, the same thing, plus 212.13 times five, which is the X, I mean, sorry, the C component of F1. So this is what I'm talking about. This component right here is generating a moment, and then this component right here is generating another moment. Um, minus BC times three, minus BC times three, because BC is trying to turn it clockwise, so it's negative. Okay, perfect. So simplifying this a little bit, it comes out to be, let me see, 2121.3 is equal to four A Y plus three BC. Let's write this as equation four. So sum of the moments in the Y is equal to zero and it is equal to CC times five plus AX times four. So that means that CC is equal to minus 0.8 AX. Let's call this equation five. And I'm gonna erase this right here to have all the equations in the same page. And I'm gonna say that sum of the moments in the C is equal to zero. And remember, this is a, as if I was looking from the top of the axis and counterclockwise was positive. And the Y, which I did before, if I was looking from the top of the positive Y axis, and counterclockwise was positive. So some of the moments in the C is equal to zero and is equal to BX times three plus AX times five. That means that AX is equal to minus 0.6 BX. And I'm gonna call this equation six. So we have equation one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we got six equations, six variables, so I can start attempting to solving this problem by doing some um, uh, basic math or basic engineering math, let's call it, because it's not so basic, right? So let's start a new page and I'm gonna make sure that in your notes you have the functions labeled as I label them so you understand what I'm doing with the equations in order to be able to reach the answer. So first, let me write equation one, which is ax plus bx plus point three five three five five f is equal to zero and then let me write equation six which is five ax plus three bx is equal to zero if i can find another function that is on these three variables then i should be able to solve the system and be able to solve for f which is the only variable that they're really asking us for they're not telling us to to find everything but that being said 
um, I have these two functions so for that I'm gonna do equation 4 which is BC is equal to 7 of 7.1 minus 1.333 AY and then I have equation 3 which 0 is equal to minus 212.13 plus 7 of 7.1 minus 1.333 AY minus 0.8 AX now what I did here is I plug in equation 5 uh, minus 0.70711F so if we clean this equation a little bit we get that 0 is equal to 494.97 minus 1.333AY here plug in equation 2 later uh, minus 0.8 AX minus 0.70711F so if we plug in uh, equation 2 there like, like I said right here we're gonna get that minus 494.97 is equal to minus 1.333 times a, uh, equation 2 which is 212.13 minus 0.61237F minus 0.8 AX minus 0.70711F and we keep solving and we're gonna get that minus 212.13 is equal to wait did I do this right yes okay yeah so basically you use distributed property to multiply here and then you solve and you get that minus 212.13 is equal to 0.10938F minus 0.8AX Let's call this equation 7. So remember right up here when I told you if we could find another equation that was in terms of these three equations we should be able to add it here and have a system of three equations with three variables. Well this is that equation because it's in terms of f and ax. So let's rewrite equation 1 which is ax plus bx plus 0.353 Five five f is equal to zero. Six is equal to five a x plus three b x is equal to zero. And then this equation, which is two one two. Hold on, let me write it down. Minus two one two point one three. Point one zero nine thirty eight F and minus point eight AX. Perfect. So now we have a system of three equations, right? And we have a system of uh, of three equations with three variables. So we have AX bx and f perfect all right guys so to solve this this system of uh three equations what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna rewrite this equation right here in terms of ax so basically what i get is that ax is equal to 265.1625 plus 0.136725f so now that I have it in terms of AX, I'm going to plug this AX into equation 1. So I'm going to plug it into here, replace this whole term by AX into equation 1. And what I'm going to... Actually, let me start with equation 6. Sorry, looking at my notes. Replace AX with AX here in equation 6. And then that comes out to be 5 times 265.1625 plus 0.136725F plus 3BX equal to 0. So let's solve this and we get 1325.81 plus 0.683625F plus 3BX is equal to 0. And one last step, we get BX 
is equal to minus 441.9375 minus 0.227875F. So look at this. We have Vx in terms of F here. We have Ax in terms of F here. So if we get this Ax and this Vx and we plug them into equation 1, so we replace this Ax in terms of F and Vx in terms of F, then we're going to have one equation in terms of F. So let's do just that. Like this. So plugging into Ax and Vx into equation 1. So let me rewrite equation 1 here. Got Ax plus Vx plus 0.35355F is equal to 0. So we're going to plug in the two equations that we just found and have one equation in terms of f which will come out to be 265.1625 plus 0.136725f minus 441.9375 minus 0.227875f plus 0.35355F is equal to 0. Now it's just a simple equation. You sum all the Fs together in one side and all the um, uh, regular numbers on the other side and you should get 0.2624F is equal to 176.775. You solve for F and you get that F is equal to 673.69 and this is all in pounds. So final answer for what should, what should F2 be so that C is equal to zero. If you made it this far, please make sure you go to finalanswer.com. There you're gonna find all the videos I've been working on and six ways to support this channel. And make sure you check my merch store by going to store.finalanswer.com.